Welcome everybody. Gotta get my wife's. I don't want too much foam on there. Filming juice. Filming juice, oh, yes. Almost, almost knocked it over. <clears throat> Hi everyone, we're here for some Kessler's Kitchen cooking, live cooking Bang lessons. Out some shepherd's pie today. All right, so this is Sophia's favorite. So um, we're gonna be doing, hold on one second guys. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> this box isn't working. Oh, that's have not happening right no now, clue. sorry. Oh, Just uh, go outside for a little bit and when I'm done. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we're going to be doing shepherd's pie today. So, uh, we sent out the recipe and um, uh, just to get ahead on some of the ingredients and the items. Cheers, everyone. Of, yes, cheers, everybody. Cheers. I'm not drinking beer, but okay. Mm. So, um, oh, yeah, good. this is, uh, like I was saying, this is one of Sophia's, uh, one of her favorite dishes. So, uh, I usually double up on the uh, mashed potatoes just because she's a little potato crazy. Um, <clears throat> she's an everything crazy. Oh, I know. I know. She's, she's nuts. So this recipe is very simple, um, so I figure we'll do it now. This way, you know, you can prepare it, get it all ready to go, and then as soon as you're ready to actually eat it, throw it in a 400-degree oven, and then um, just to warm it up and get some color on those potatoes, and then you're good to go, mm. all right? So um, I've boiled the potatoes ahead of time just to kind of kick things, kick things off quickly. Um, so what we'll do is we'll shoot over here, and we'll actually start sauteing the vegetables for the shepherd's pie mixture. Okay. And then we'll do the meat, and then as soon as we get the meat inside the pan, we're gonna start working on our potatoes. We'll mash the potatoes, we'll get them all fixed up, and then we'll finish up the uh, the beef. All right, rather quick dish. Okay? Whatever you say, babe, let's all go. Right? So, come on over here. Okay. Hi, everybody. Yes, that's very loud. We don't need that on right now. Okay, roughly around two tablespoons of earl. Earl, you got that going? A little earl. Okay, first thing what you want to do is throw in your onions and your carrots. Medium heat? Because okay. I always mess this part up too. Yeah. I get burned. Kathy's watching. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. And your mom and Aunt Pam. Amory McManus. Mom's from school. Okay. Got a good audience. This is going to be who's yummy. Cook, who's cooking with us? Is anybody actually cooking with us? Because so, Brittany's busy. She's, uh, she's not on. Toss that in. We're going to reserve our garlic once we cook these carrots and these onions. Okay. Then we'll do the garlic afterwards. All right. What we want to do is we want to just get a little bit of color on these. Why are you doing the garlic after? I well, what, you, start wanna, with what you wanna do, if I put the garlic in and I try to saute the carrots and the onions, the garlic most likely will burn before okay. I can actually get color on the carrots and onions. Right, okay. so we'll cook Because they off. take longer to cook. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, and again, if we were gonna be serving this dish right away, I would cook the carrots first. Yeah, for about two to three minutes because the carrots are a bit Like more, boil them? Yeah, well, you could if you wanted to. There's such a small dice on here that they're going to saute. Well, that's because you, know. you did it, dude. I mean, really? Well, just in Come general, they're, just, they're smaller. If so I the did it, it wouldn't be are. looking like that. You can always blanch them in water and okay. then just toss them, toss them in there. But they, they relatively pretty, you know, it's pretty quick through here. Okay. All right? Yes, what do you need, Sophie? Uh, when, we're, when we're done with this, we'll help you, help you out. Okay. And um, so you actually have your, your carrots and your onions going. I'm just gonna put a little bit of salt and some pepper. Very important with, with, with a dish like this, it's very, very important. You wanna season each layer, right? Because at the end of the day, what you don't want to happen is, is that when you actually have your beef mixer, your potato mixer, um, you want them all to complement each other because some people may not want as much beef as potato or you know, and vice versa. So you wanna make sure that everything is properly seasoned. So you can hear the sizzling of the pan. Uh, we wanna make sure that that's actually a good, good, good color on it. Six to eight minutes. Yeah, I'll do this. I got it. Nope, I got it. There you go. Sorry. We're doing Everybody, right we got here. Just children us, bothering okay? us in the background. And it's cause... a beautiful day out. I don't know why, why they're not outside. <laughs> so I guess kids nowadays are, electronic. I guess kids are, are allergic to uh, being outside. Yeah, nowadays. I think so. The sun is out. It's beautiful, it's beautiful out beautiful. today. It was supposed to rain and it's beautiful. All right. So we have our two pounds of, uh, of beef, okay? open get this ready now if you would like you know when you're doing this stuff if you can while you're doing the prep work and stuff like that take your meat out of the fridge okay 
very important. A lot of people, what they don't realize is that when you're doing pans like this and you're doing sauteing things and stuff, it's very, very important to make sure that when you're cooking um, in a saute pan or even a grill, take your meats out, let them get to room temperature if you can, right? Because if you're going from that cold, cold, cold refrigerator temperature mm -hmm. into your pan, right, it's going to take a little bit longer for the pan to get back up to heat. Okay. All right? Um, so Got just it. just rule of thumb, right? Anytime you're doing it. So this is what we want. You hear that sound? You mm -hmm. see that, that bubbling? All right? We're not going to move it because, again, I want to achieve just a little bit of color on these. Okay? okay. The, beef is a, uh, the beef is dark. Uh, and, and, and traditionally, shepherd's pie is made with lamb. Okay? Um, cottage pie is with beef. Cottage pie. Cottage pie. I've never even right? heard of that so, in my life. So what we're going to do is we're going to give this a little mix. Okay? Um, so the whatever you could find at the moment, right? If you have lamb, don't worry about it. It's just the shepherd's pie. You know, you just want it to be um, ground red meat. All right. Has to be red meat. Yeah, you want it to be red meat. But like, you never do it with like a oh, chicken. I, to be honest, I've never had meat. like a turkey or chicken. Because that sounds pie. like I'm something not, you would like. I'm for not some really sure. Crazy but, you know, reason. Yeah, like turkey meatloaf, chicken meatloaf, you know things like that. But I think for shepherd's pie, as long as you go with like lamb, uh -huh. you could do bison. You know, which is really nice. You know, again, it's very lean, so you just want to make sure that you have enough moisture in your potatoes. Hi, Carrie. Carrie's right. back on. Hey, Carrie. All right. So um, once we get the meat inside here, we're actually going to start working on our potatoes. Um, and then we're, we're going to, this dish should cook pretty fairly quick. Okay. The thing that takes the longest is when you bake it in the oven. All right. But getting everything prepped and ready to go is not that difficult. Right? Well, like chopping everything up. I mean, it comes like second yeah, nature I, to I, you, I, but yeah, I think the prep time and, and I, and I could I, use my, um, my thing, the, um, the chopper thing for that. Absolutely. What's it called again? Absolutely. Because listen, there's no, there's no, cause I can't do those but little there's chops. No, there's no, right or wrong size wrong. on this you could go you could go as rustic as possible you could you could rough chop the carrots you just want to make sure that when you're cooking them that they're they're somewhat cooked yeah because when they go in the oven they're gonna have the beef they're gonna have the potatoes they're gonna they're gonna have things in there but you might have to cook it a little bit longer so that's why just and also when you're biting it the mouthfeel right you right know, your beef is small your peas are small your onions are diced small so it's just a matter you don't want to be like a big know, chunk of carrot and piece. oh yeah. hey here's a carrot shepherd's pie right yeah, okay should be you know, so you could use a machine. Absolutely. There's no, there's no, you know, rhyme or reason for this. So this is just, you know, you have a professional dicing it. So I can't help it. This is just how I, you know, we're so used to it, doing it all the time. So you see that color on here? That's what I want. Okay. <laughs> not, not too far. I'm, now I'm going to add my garlic. Okay. You know, about two minutes. I just want, I just frame it, right? I just Meg wanna... Shea said, Italian chef make him shepherd's pie. That's I love right. it. That's right. See, listen, Meg, the three but people. Listen, I'm, I'm don't Italian, realize... Irish, Greek, and German. I'm, He's I'm a mutt. part of everything. <laughs> He's got everything right? in him. So, so I think that's why, I think that's why I, 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 you know, enjoy everything so much, right? It's good. I never eat shepherd's pie in my life until I met Damon, so. Now, trick. What I like to do is when I'm using this large pan, mm -hmm. watch what I do here. Okay, so, watch it. I push, so my garlic, I can smell it, it's already, it's already fragrant, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want it to go any further. I have my pan on medium high right now, okay? If you have a gas stove, you know, I'm on medium high right now, because what I want to do is I want to achieve some brownie, okay. right? So ready? So I just drop this, you hear that? Yes, That's I what hear you want it. to hear. All right. All right? So if you crowd the pan, it's gonna, it's gonna stop. So what I do is I'll just push this over here. That's why it's important to have a hot pan. So now I'm just gonna drop this guy in here. I'm not gonna move it. I'm just gonna let it let it do a thing for a minute. But okay. as soon as I disrupt it, as soon as I disrupt it, liquid is gonna get in here and then it's actually gonna start to steam. Right? Okay. It's okay. steaming now, yes, but I'm not moving it. So it's actually sauteing. So that that's that noise on there is the searing of the beef. Searing of and the bottom of the beef. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You mm. do it in less batches. Smells this is, delicious. This is for two pounds of meat. Okay. Okay. You need your beer? I do I need my beer, at thank you. <laughs> it's like, mm. how is I gonna get it over here? We get to be like, Doc Ock. Right? Yeah. Um, what else? So, um, while, that's, while that is browning, okay, what I'm gonna do is- Maybe gonna... we remind everybody that um, every time we do these videos, we like to uh, make a delivery because unfortunately we're still hearing about some of our people that we know that have um, had coronavirus, have coronavirus. Um, 
unfortunately, people that have passed away from coronavirus. And also, of course, our doctors, our nurses, everybody we can think of. You know, my brother is still working in the grocery store. It's stop and shop. Um, Stocking shelves and cleaning the shelves and doing everything. So, like, we forget about people that just doing their everyday job and putting themselves at risk. Power plant people. Pout people that work in our power plants that give us Great. our gas. I get, I get you a shout out. Um, you know, <laughs> we heard that from our friend right? Dave Gribben the other day that we you know, we don't give shout outs to the power give, plant people and, and that keep remember, our power it's on. Very important, right? Because if we lose power, and there's so many of these 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 new these uh these makeshift hospitals that are going up. Yeah. Right. And I was just talking to a the electricians. Of ours, and yeah. The, the amount of work that goes into it, the amount of people that are out there, you know doing what they do to make sure that we uh, we don't miss a beat and we se, beat right? this thing you know so thank you to everybody. so thank you to everybody and we'll be delivering some food too we have uh two people on our list yep. um to bring some uh, i think we're going to do damon's uh, chicken chicken under the oven dish for two people that we'll be delivering it to yep. so if anybody you know if you guys have the means and you can make a meal for somebody to just say thank you they're working their butts off to keep us you know, going, and we just want to show them the appreciation for it because they really do appreciate it. I know I would if I was out there working all day and coming home to my family, putting my family in harm's way, risking Stay safe that. So and thank you. And uh, you know, when you come home and you want to watch this video, and this video puts a smile on your face because of some of the things that we say, and you know, that's 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 good. That makes us makes us feel like we're doing something for you, right? Yeah. So thank you for all that you guys do. We're going to get through this and the economy is going to bounce back and everybody's going to be back to... Yep. Just got to get through this hump, right? All right. So what we're going to do is we're, gonna, we're browning our, our So you our, broke our it up. So you, yep, I just broke it up a little bit, right? So as you can see, see that meat over here? It's hard mm -hmm. to like tell, but see, you get yeah. a little bit of browning. So I can see it. Right? So... You don't want to crowd the pan too much, so that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess around with it anymore. Okay, I'm okay. gonna leave it here, let it go for like another minute or so. Okay, uh, in the meantime, if you want, I've taken my uh, my oh, milk. Oh, guys, this got this smells so good, guys. I think we're gonna say something. <laughs> no, like, oh my gosh. No, it smells so good. I must say, this is gonna be delicious. All right. So for here, your potatoes. So here's the potatoes. Hold on, I'm coming ahead. Take a sip now. If you have a potato masher, mm -hmm. okay, this guy, okay? yep. this, this thing has probably been through like my oh. grandmother, my mother, so this yeah. is like third generation stuff. It's been right? around a long time. Been around time. for a while. So yeah. if you have one of these, use these. If not, a spatula is fine. You just want to, want to get in there, right? So uh, I've cooked the potatoes, um, and again, they're just breaking apart, okay? okay? It's very important when you're doing mashed potatoes, a lot of people don't realize this, is you don't let them sit in the water. They become sponges. So once they're boiling, once they break up with a tong or a fork or whatever, strain them, mm -hmm. put them back in the same cooking dish. Because and you that, obviously peeled them first. Yes, I peeled them first, yes. My grandmother used to cook them and then make me peel them after. Because she didn't like you. Because she didn't like you. I mean, right? that was, it was hot. Right. Your fingers, <laughs> your fingers were just... Being... What memories we have. That's all right. So, but she always used to say it was just easier to get the skin off. But yeah. she must have had rubber fingers like you because I did not like doing that. Uh, everybody does this, this yeah, so I'm just giving it, giving it a quick toss, breaking it up. Okay. Now I have it on, now I actually have it on high heat. Okay, because I want to get this thing going. So back to the potatoes. So you, you strain them and then you put them back into the hot vessel, right? What happens is all the residual water that's on there, it's see what's happening now, it's steaming. Mm -hmm. So you don't want your potato you want your potatoes as dry as possible. Okay. Because when you add your milk and your butter, all right. And there's, there's, there's a good recipe. You know when I make my potatoes at home. Oh, there's Britt. She's on now. Oh, yeah. It's funny. When we used to do, I don't know if Ishmael's watching, but we used to do some recipes for, uh, for uh, the rest in peace, you know, the, 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 the late, great uh, chef Joel Robichon. And, uh, and even Daniel Ballou, too. We used to actually add a pound of butter for each potato, right? We would do like, they call it pomme de terre. And, um, I mean, they come out phenomenal. Well, but, yeah. <laughs> it's a pound but of... Um... Oh, it's great. Pound yeah. of butter. So for Hello. here, we're adding a little bit of milk okay. and some butter. Right? Okay. So see what I've just done? I, I, just, I just mashed these, okay? Don't want to go too crazy mixing and mashing them because the starches will come out, right? So once you've mashed them, once you're... You always say that, but like, what is that? 
You know, what like, does it uh, do? Like, like you know, like like uh, to get like glue. Yeah, it'll get oh. like gluey, so it'll, it'll become like glue. It'll, it'll, it, we we say like it's like stucco. Oh, right? okay. It literally, literally, and it just texture-wise, it doesn't look right. It just looks very natty. It does okay. not look good at all. You can tell when it start when when the potatoes have been. Now, do you leave the potatoes like lumpy a little bit? You didn't really do much. No, so. I didn't because they were cooked. They were cooked perfect. So okay. and it's rice, so I just literally went through. And I just, you know, going through and mashed them here. Okay. All right. Now, then what I'm going to do is, once it's done, I'm going to use the same utensil just to mix it up. I've got my butter and my milk. Wait, let me see that. Okay. Just Wait, my, you put milk? Just milk. I just warmed it in the microwave just to warm it up. Okay. You hot didn't potatoes, tell them that. Hot potato, sorry. So just Chef. put this in the microwave for about 40 minutes. Skip and step. 40 right. minutes? 40 seconds. Whoa. 40 minutes? I was like, geez, that wouldn't be good. 40 seconds. Good thing I'm holding the camera yeah, and listening yeah. to what All you're right. saying. Put this in there. Okay, now, get that going, okay, so see what I see? We got Australia on, hey Nick. Hey Nick, what's up? See, so what we do, I'm not messing around with it too much, I just, I just incorporated it. Okay. Done, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a spatula. Okay. Just to make sure that everything is incorporated and this next step is very important. Season your potatoes, remember. Each layer, right? Right, okay. So we're gonna just season this with a little, a little salt. A little? Okay. okay. Um, you can add in, I'm just gonna put just a pinch of just black pepper in here, just, just a, a pinch. You can obviously go heavier, Sophia doesn't really like it too when much. When they see black stuff in their food, forget it, they, they won't eat specs. it. So see what I'm doing? See the technique? So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm almost folding it. Because if I were to go in there and keep mashing it, that's where the starches will break up, right? Mm, so yummy. this is done. What I want to do is I just want to actually get a spoon. I'm going to taste just because I I, I, I I need to make sure that everything is a little bit more salt. Okay. Whoa. Okay. So. I'm surprised at you. Well, it looks like a lot, but remember, it's gray salt, right? So it's not like uh, iodized or you know kosher salt. So this is actually looking very good. So now what I'm going to do is... You want to clarify that with people? You're mixing everything together. We see I'm, that. I'm, yeah, the gray so, salt, so, kosher on, salt on, thing that you just said. Because so, I don't understand okay, that hold at on all. A second. Um, so what we'll do is I'm just going to mix this up now. This is actually where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Right? Smells delicious. While the potatoes are going, you have flour, right? So you take a little bit of your flour, and what you, you do is you dust it. And this... We're working on that, Claudine. I'm going to get the gray salt thing... Taking yep, we'll care because I don't understand what you said I'll either. Hold on, hold on. So you want to mix this up, <laughs> okay? So once you mix up your flour in here, okay, the flour is going to act as a binder, right? And, and the Jeremy's on here. He's going to give me the, mm, the he's quote, not right? on. Sanjia, right? And so what you're going to do is you have your your flour. We're now going to add a cup of our beef stock to this. Okay. That a new measuring cup you got there? Yep. Kids cereal bowl. I know it. I know it. It works. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're going to mix this up. But see the color on the beef? That's what you want. Yeah. You want to get some nice brown color. Okay. Now I'm just going to mix this up. It still is on high because I want it to come to a boil. And then once it comes to a boil, I'm going to turn it down. I'm going to simmer it for about 10 to 15 minutes. Just cook that flour out. Okay. Very important, and it's going to, the flour is actually going to um, act as a thickener. So it's gonna actually thicken this. So we're gonna get a little bit of a, of like a, a sauce, yeah? With our with our beef, mm. okay? Which is gonna help because if the potatoes in the oven, if they dry out, right? You actually have a little bit left. So, here, we're gonna leave that alone now. Salt. Going back to the gray salt. So you have different things. We're going to get into this. Remember that night? Oh, I yeah. could go on and, and on. Salt and on. demonstration so, we can have. Yeah. All the different um, kinds of salt he has in this house. So so gray salt and, and kosher salt, fleur de sel, pink salt. You got so many different so many different salts, right? I just like to use the gray salt. And what I'm doing while I'm telling you about salt, I'm just cracking egg because I want to make the potatoes here. So we're just going to use the egg yolk. Reserve your egg whites for breakfast or, you know... Whatever you're doing, if you're making a meringue or, or something, just reserve that, okay? Now, very important, don't let the egg sit in here. Drop it in, and immediately mix it up. Okay, so come over here, just okay. so you can see. Why, will it like cook in there? Yeah, you can scramble eggs. 
Ooh, right? So okay. what you're going to do is, see, you're just mixing this up. Now, the egg in here, number one, not only does it make it, you know, richer, this is very similar to like a, uh, like a Dutch's potato, right? Where they add the eggs inside of it and then they pipe them into a shape. We're not going to pipe it. We're just actually going to leave it like this. It's going to help with the color and a little bit of the leavening too and make a little richness, right? Sorry for the finger in there. All right. Mm. It's for us. Perfect. Perfect. Oh. Good. Okay. Salt. So I'm going to bring this down to <clears throat> low. See how this is starting to thicken? So anyway, the gray salt is just the, I apologize, guys. We'll get there. We got, like, we got like 10 things going on. The gray salt is just, again, preference, right? You know, you have it's like, actually called gray salt. Yeah, it's gray salt because it's, it's, it's gray. It comes from a specific region. And what they do is they actually, you know, fleur de sel. Wait, so you uh, buy it on the bag salted, and it says gray have, salt. Yeah, you have salt de garonne, which is from a specific region in France, right? Um, fleur de sel is typically used for like finishing salt. So when, you, when we slice the steak sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'll do a little bit of the finishing salt. Okay. Pink salt as well. I just use whatever salt is on the counter there, so I uh, hope you're not. Kosher salt is, is mainly just for cooking. If you're, you know, when you're boiling things, I mm -hmm. like to use the um, the iodized salt, right? Right. Just because, you know, the kosher salt is, well, again, you have to. It's a little nicer, I'm, I'm a right? professional, right? So there's certain things that I do for a specific reason. I don't need right. to get but into people all are that. watching this video, so they can maybe learn something from right. you. But, so but you the, just said gray salt, and it doesn't yeah, really. because I like the gray salt just because, again, it is, it's, um, it's really a preference, Tiffany right? wants to know, really... where would you buy gray salt? Whole Foods, Trader it, and Joe's. And on the bag, let me just clarify, it says gray, gray salt. salt. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's amazing. Um, you can buy pink salt in Whole Foods. Okay. Himalayan salt. You can buy all these different that things. That I've seen. Right. Okay. So it's just, a, it's just, you know, it's just a different type of salt. <clears throat> That's it. Um, Flavor-wise, is it a difference? I think you will notice a bit of a difference. Um... It's just a nice flavor. It's a nice, you know, mm -hmm. whereas sometimes kosher salt, if it's too much, you're like, oh my gosh, this is, you can actually feel it. Whereas gray is salt. Is gray salt almost like a little tiny, tiny bit wet? Yeah. See, it's like a little, See? it's almost like, okay. not sticky, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I, I think I know the difference. All right. So just, a little. just really, I mean, I have to really get into it, right? So. Our, our beef is good. What we're going to do is we're going to come back over here. Okay, I'm coming. Hold on. I got a great We're just going to rough chop some thyme. Okay, my drink. Don't chop it too much, right? Save it for the last part to actually run your knife through it or else it'll brown. Okay, so we just just got that. Okay. I just saw got it. About, maybe, maybe about a, a teaspoon and a half. Oh, um, I thought I was following you. Okay, Sorry, right making there. everybody dizzy. Yeah, stay right there. Hold on. I'm coming right back. Okay. All right. That's that. Then we have our peas, frozen peas. Okay, drop mm -hmm. them in. All right. We're gonna add in our Worcestershire sauce and then we're gonna taste it. Worcestershire, add in a teaspoon, okay? How does it, doesn't it look great? Look at the color. It looks it's green. It smells, it's got... everything is delicious. Okay, so you have one teaspoon of... So on here, whoever's watching, like whose kids would eat this? I have one out of three that would eat this. One teaspoon. Maybe Anthony will try it, but Sophia will devour. Oh, yeah. She'll, she'll go. devour this oh, for she days. Goes, she goes bananas for this. All right. So we're going to get a little mix. Right now I have it on medium. Tiffany wants to know, will there be a chopping class? Yes. He was we, thinking about doing actually, that, we actually. Did, we actually said we were going to do that, right? Yeah, we were talking about doing, like, a knife class. Because I always, he always yells at me because I use the wrong knife for things. Like, I'll be cutting bread, and I'll use mm. not a bread knife. and Or I'll cut fish, and I'll use a bread knife, you know, because I'm just grabbing whatever's there. Hi, Marco. Ciao, Marco. You Hope can't, you guys are doing you guys good in Italy. This, but you can't smell it. Money. It's good. Money. It smells delicious. Too bad there's no smell of vision, huh? All right. This is good. I'm not going to cook this any longer. Okay. All right. Potatoes are good. Okay. Now we go into assemble mode. Assembling. We'll quickly assemble this. Over there? You can't bring everything over there? I can't. I'm going to. Okay. I'll, I'll grab these. You focus on the camera. Yep, I got it. So I All can right. sit down. My drink. Sit down, drink your beer. Okay. Okay. We are. Let me just put this here so it's going to get hot. Okay. And I'm not going to bake mine off yet, guys, just because it's it's still early. 
So how long would you bake it for? 20 minutes. 400 degrees. Oh, that's it. Okay, that's it. so. All right, that works. Okay. So what you do is season everything. Make sure that everything is good. Okay. Um, it might look like a lot. If you have, this is a uh, 13 by 9. I think I put in a recipe for an 11 by 7. Okay. Um, but if you have a 13 by 9, it's, it's, it's essentially... Same thing, it doesn't matter. It's just gonna make your shepherd's pie a little higher, a little lower, whatever it is. Okay. Um, right, so that's all that I had. I wasn't gonna get into it with you to go buy me something. I already got in trouble once. I well, I can't find things in the store. Are you kidding me? I'm not going to different stores to buy a pan for you. Oh, smells so good. Looks good. Okay. Delish. So, that's that. Okay, we put this in there. <laughs> Elaine said she could smell it across the street. Oh, you! Oh, nice. Mm -mm, you have to come over for come a over, bite. Come over, we'll give you a little. I wish. So once this is all over, Elaine, you're gonna have a big block party. Oh yeah, oh it's coming. Pizzas, you name it. All right, so see what I'm doing? I'm just packing this down. Okay. okay. That's it. That's it for that guy. Okay. Now comes our potatoes. I like to assemble it. Don't let this sit because then the potatoes are not as easy to, to, to work with, right? So we're just gonna drop a little dollop here, a little dollop here. If you don't like that much potatoes, just cover cover the top. But I have somebody here that likes, loves these potatoes, right? She just, I don't know where she puts it, your daughter, huh? I don't know either. Well, she takes after you. Okay, so I'm just going, I'm just gonna put it all, look at that. Yeah, delicious. Okay. Right? Very important when you're doing this, okay? Because as it bakes at such a high temperature, it's gonna bubble and boil over. You wanna make sure that you get the ends, okay? Almost acts like a, like a, like a barrier, like protects it from almost boiling over. So see what I just did? Oh, so it won't boil over because the potatoes Yeah, in because there. if it wasn't the high heat, it would start to come um, and splat all over the place, okay. right? So just make sure you're, try to get your your corners and your edges done first, right? I gotcha. Just move it around. Remember, you're in charge, right? Not the potatoes. Right. Okay. Right here, you can always smooth it out afterwards. I'll show you what we do. Now, a couple people, what they'll do is they'll take this opportunity now to maybe add a little bit more butter on top or some paprika, you know, or seasoning or throw in some parsley, you know, really whatever you want, it's quite okay. So whatever your preference is, okay? As I said, a lot of times when we do stuff on here, we do it because that's what, you know, that's what the kids are used to and that's what they eat, right? Okay, so see how I've got that? It's all sealed. Okay. Yeah, I could see the liquids kind of under the right. potatoes. Okay. And now I'm just, it's since so this is good. for us, I'm using my finger. I'm just going to get the remainder. It's just for us only. And then I'll show you what I like to do just to make, you know, you could do little little decorations on this, right? So you just smooth out the top. Okay. Then just a little, little tap. Okay. Okay. And for this, you can do, you know, you can do. You know, because what will happen is, is that when it bakes off, mm -hmm. right, we can actually no, I'll use this. When this bakes off, what, what what's going to happen is, is that your egg, it's going to brown, right? And then this right here, it's just going to add a nice little decoration. It's almost going to be like, you know, kind of like a meringue-ish type thing, because this is actually going to brown the color and it's going to look nice and textured. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you just take your spatula and just kind of. I'm gonna tap it down. Okay. Delish. Makes little peaks. All right. And 400 degrees, 20 minutes. Drink it with your favorite beer. Drink it with a glass of Merlot, mm -hmm. Cabernet, something like that. And that's it, guys. That is that is that is all she wrote. Shepherd's pie in 32 minutes. Well, you had everything cut up first. Let's not deceive people. And you're a chef. Okay. So you're kind of good at that. Those. But you know what? I'll take it, babe. <clears throat> I'll take it. Looks delicious. I yes. can't wait to eat it later. Thanks, so again, babe, guys, for making everybody, dinner thank again. Thank you for watching. Thank you. If you have any questions, 
you know, let us know. We got some some good stuff coming up this this week. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna be doing the katsu chicken, katsu style chicken. You you want to explain to people nope. maybe what that is? Oh yeah, okay, I could. <coughs> so so you hear like chicken katsu, pork katsu. It's traditional Japanese fried, um, panko fried uh, proteins, right? Okay. What we do is instead of frying it, is I bake it off in the oven at 425 degrees. Okay. Right. So it's 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 it's. Katsu, Are you gonna do that with the udon style. noodles like yes, you normally do, do with the rest? Okay, noodles, good. Yeah, and the tonkatsu good. barbecue sauce. So really, really good. And then Friday we're gonna be doing our yogurt coffee cake, yes. which is good. We'll do it early in the day so that you can enjoy it throughout the day. Yeah, so you guys can look on our pages and see when those times are going to be and um, let us know if you have any questions about this. And we want to see pictures. Whoever makes this, even if it's days from now, it doesn't matter. We want to see pictures. It's awesome for us to get the pictures. We've been yeah. loving them. So thank you to everybody that's out there working, busting their butts, putting yes. themselves in harm's way. Thank you so much. And everybody else, just stay safe. safe, hang in there, and we'll get through this. Together. Happy cooking, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.